In this section, I'm going to talk about the quality of your paint and the quality of your paper. Um, all matter, of course, um, but um, it just depends on what level you're looking for. Um, quality of paint. There are sometimes you can get some fairly cheap paint that come in, in large sets and in cakes, little cakes like this in a plastic set for like five dollars or something like that. And they're very colorful and they're fun to play with, but they often dry cloudy and opaque. Um, they also seem kind of grainy in texture. An example of some things that I did with these kind of um, paints or, uh, that are cheaper um, are these things. You can see they dry kind of opaque and a little bit kind of chalky, that kind of thing. They also don't necessarily blend their colors very well. An example of what I did with some more expensive paint is you can see it's much more luminous, much clearer, um, it's much brighter, and more of the paper shows through. It matters if the paint is opaque or not because one of the things that gives watercolor its luminosity, its shine, is that you get a little bit of the white paper reflecting through. Um, that tends to help give that kind of glow that a lot of be really beautiful professional watercolors have. Um, in contrast, again, you can see that, and you can see the difference between the grains coming out. Um, so if you can, it's, it's a good idea to get a, at least a little bit of a professional quality water paper. Um, oh, sorry, professional quality watercolor paint. Um, some stores have, have great sales going on and you can pick up just a few tubes. Usually they suggest starting with three, um, they suggest starting with a warm and a cool of three colors, which is blue, yellow, and red. Those are the three primary colors. Um, and temperature is something that there are many videos on, but basically there are some colors that, a warm color is a color that really stands out. It tends to be reddish in nature or orange or yellow, for example, are warm colors. The cool colors tend to be um, things like blues and purples for, and greens, for example. The more that you can get like a, a warm red, for example, you can have, I mean, sorry, a warm blue. Um, a warm blue would be a blue that has a little bit more of a red tinge to it. For example, there's a phthalo blue that has a red shade to it. Um, you could also find, um, theoretically, a red or an orange that has a little bit more of a blue tint to it, in which case it would be a little bit cooler than a pure red or a pure orange or yellow. Um, basically, so good quality um, paints. Um, they tend to be transparent. Like I said, they show the paper through a little bit um, more. However, there are different manufacturers. Some of the ones, for example, by Holbein um, seem to me to be a little bit more opaque. Um, the label will often tell you if it's transparent or semi-transparent. It's often a moon shape. Um, I'll see if I can give you a little quick draw. That's somewhere on the label that's a moon. If it's completely clear, it's transparent, meaning you can really see the paper underneath it um, in a good way. That makes it, again, more luminous and more shine to it, more glow rather. If it's half, that means it's somewhere in the middle. If it's like completely shaded in, it means it's opaque, meaning you can't really see much of the paper underneath it. Um, so it just kind of depends. Different people have different preferences. Um, some people like to use completely transparent paint because it tends to make your, your paintings really glow when you do that. And, and, it, and it tends to make very, very beautiful um, mixes of colors. Um, sometimes when you mix colors, you can get a color that's kind of dull or muddy or something, what we call muddy. Um, and it's not quite as, um, not quite as, usually it's quite as appealing. Um, when, you, when you use purely transparent paints, it's very easy to mix very clear, very beautiful colors. Um, so a lot of people prefer that. Um, but the most important thing is, again, just get to know your paints. Um, one of the things that, of course, someone like me would do when they start painting is they go out and they buy a whole bunch of pretty paints. Um, you can kind of see, I can show you my palette real quick, um, all the paints I've collected over the years. Um, many different blues, many different yellows, many different oranges and reds, because um, I love the color. Color is what attracted me to watercolor. It's what attracts most people, I think, to painting, is a desire for color. But the problem is when you buy too many um, paints at the same time, you don't learn your paints. Um, just like you need to know your brushes, you need to know your paints. Um, the reason why is if you don't, you don't know what mixes go together. You don't know which blue you're looking for automatically. Um, you can create a cheat sheet like I did. Make out your swatches and that can help. But when you literally have dozens of colors, it's very hard to know from memory like what to do if you want to make this certain color. Starting with a, a limited palette, a limited number of colors can help you learn your colors a little bit more and make it a little bit more automatic. Um, anyway, that is my um, uh, take on paints. Um, there are many different, many different brands, many different colors. Just it's it's really fun to play with. Quality of paper. 
um, you do want to use watercolor paper. Um, the reason why is when you get paper very wet, what happens is it buckles, which means basically it bends and warps. Um, you end up getting little waves in your paper. Instead of getting a paper that stays straight, you have little dips and valleys in it. Um, it can make it, what happens is when you have one of those sort of dips and valleys in your paper, the water, which again has a mind of its own, pools in places you don't necessarily want it to go. The water will flow down into the lowest area. So when you have different little um, hills and valleys in your paper, what happens is that pool will sink, um, all the water and the paint will sink into those lower places, and that's not necessarily where you want it to go. It can be very hard, therefore, to keep your paint where you want it, um, and instead you end up creating some things that you don't. So watercolor paper, um, that's uh, paper that's not watercolor, is very, very um, prone to do that. Um, it will do that um, buckling or bending um, that we talked about. Higher quality paper is usually made of, high, of cotton. Um, artist grade, it can be expensive. You can buy larger sheets and then kind of um, cut them up. You can also look for sales. Um, you don't necessarily need to start with the best paper. Um, like I said, it is expensive. Um, but um, if you want to do a lot of wet on wet kind of techniques, they do better with um, high quality paper. Um, it absorbs the water better. It also leaves the water a little bit, the water doesn't dry quite as quickly. Um, so that means you can kind of fiddle with it a little bit more, blend new colors, bleed it out, do things like that. Whereas a paper such as um, the medium grade level, even watercolor paper will often dry much more quickly and then it's hard to kind of fiddle with it afterwards. And you can see, this is the pure cotton paper, the, the expensive stuff. This is the middle grade, um, you know, regular kind of paper, watercolor paper. Is that when you try to bleed it and, and try to add these little beautiful little um, watercolor bleeds that we have, um, it works much more smoothly with this one. This one, just the paper just um, works better than the paper over here. Um, so if you have, you know, the option, um, it's very, it's worthwhile to get good paper, but if you can't, and you, especially if you do a lot of dry stuff, um, not using a tremendous amount of water, your medium grade paper will also be good to practice with. Um, also good quality water paper, you can scrub a little bit more. Um, you can, in other words, try to erase your mistakes. If you do that kind of scrubbing on cheap paper, what often happens is you can tear the surface of the paper. Um, you end up with, um, you can literally um, damage the surface of the paper and it won't necessarily take new paint. Um, so that can be something that's a concern um, with cheap paper, with cheap, um, paper as well. Um, and finally, another little quick hint. Um, if you do have some paper and you need to, um, to erase something of it, you can either use like a magic erase, erase um, I think it's called Magic Erase, um, or the, the Aqualift. These are little sponges that you can use that will actually help rub some of the paper away. Sorry, rub some of the paint away. Um, if you wet it, you can sometimes, trying to find a color that let me do it, but you can sometimes use it to get rid of some of the paper that you don't want. You just have to be careful again to do it fairly gently so you don't damage your paper. Um, but that's the, the benefit of having higher quality paper. It can put up with a little bit more abuse. Thank you.